refill. I might because I ran out of beer, so now I'm drinking like Fireball. You read my text. Good, bro. This is gonna be a rowdy <laughs> podcast. Hey guys, right, I'll, what I'll up? Back. What up? I'm gonna go. Oh, we're we're going right now. Yeah. Gonna get your we're refill. going right now, dude. Go get your refill. Yeah, or, I'm gonna go get some Fireball. Hurry up, quick. run. All right, while he's gone, PFC yeah, two eighty five. <laughs> PFC two eighty five. <laughs> Premier League match day 28 review. I don't know if you guys can tell it out there, but we're doing a remote cast. Got some crappy weather um, out here in Boston, Mass. Um, so we decided to hop on the Google Hangouts and get this done. So if we're talking over each other, you know, <laughs> give us, man. You know, the energy is always high when it comes to this podcast. So doesn't sound yeah, pretty man. Bad with your yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had to slow it down before Hussey gets back from his fight. Fireball shots uh, escapade. And you know he's going to come in hot with Liverpool talk. Yeah. And that's where we're going to open with the Merseyside Derby. But I'll get in there. Liverpool sucks. What the hell's going on, man? You saw what I said in the group, bro. I said, I, I called this, bro, a day. I said, stumbles are on. I, I was talking about Arsenal, but it implied Liverpool as well. And I mean, coming out with the next one. reach, bro. I know. Like, what a <laughs> reach. Why are you so desperate for that one? Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag we take those. We take those. <laughs> no, but this is—it was a boring game. Liverpool are a boring team. Um, <laughs> Everton, you know, shout out to them for getting a clean sheet and what they classified as a World Cup final, according to Marco Silva. I mean, it was man. Considering the last game uh, they played, where Everton, I think, was going to win that one, or were they going to pull off a tie and uh, like, right, and then gonna Pickford, be a tie. Pickford and then, like just went brain dead for a second. Yeah, then or gave Origi the winner. Um, so and man, this was important this game too, man. They had it was interesting because Mane I know has been the guy who's been off form lately, so he starts at center forward, Salah at his natural right wing position, and Diva Origi, who scored in the last three out of four, um, Merseyside derbies, at least the ones he's played in. Um, All right, man, let's 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 talk about this, man. You said it, Mane starts up top, or who's a number nine, doesn't get to start up top. Obviously, it was a very fluid formation. But we saw Salah spending a lot of time back in his original position. Do you think Klopp is giving up on the number nine experiment of this season? Obviously, if you look no. at his game-to-game performance, I've, I've seen his clear, numbers are still good. But go ahead. I've seen a clear pattern with Klopp. Whoever is hot gets to play the nine. Like, okay. Firmino was presumed at first to be that center forward, right? Okay, then Salah got crazy hot in terms of scoring goals. Let's yep. right, take him there. And then... Within the past three weeks or so, Mane's been the guy who's been scoring most of the goals. So I think Klopp, he doesn't have – Liverpool does, does not have a true center forward. If you look at these guys, like Salah's a natural right winger who can play center forward. Firmino, we've all said it. Yes, he can play center forward, but he tends to drop deeper and, yep. and assist and be more of a false nine. Mane, he's going to try – he's an advanced strike. He's going to try to run beyond the lines a lot. So they don't have a natural center forward, and I see what I, what Klopp looks to be doing is whoever's the hot guy gets to play there. What do you think of that strategy of like having basically three false nines? I don't like it. Um, I know that. Well, the thing is, they will couch, right? So they had their opportunities this game, man. I mean, yeah. the one where Michael Keane comes in, he makes a recovery tackle. Salah so takes that extra touch. I mean, if it's last year, it's the perfect touch. It's a messy esque touch, and he probably chips the keeper. Right, so there's there's lots of things. Salah for me, there's been a drop in confidence. And Massive not even, drop, not even last year, like two yeah. months ago, he would have scored that. Yeah, he would have scored both those chances two months ago. Let's just oh, yeah, Huss, Huss, this Look, is your time, and, bro. Okay, here, here's the thing. Um, when it comes down to it, Liverpool, <laughs> exactly. number one, <laughs> Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool has <laughs> overachieved this year. Let's be honest with everyone, everything. Liverpool has been overachieving. Man City has been underachieving. That's why we have the predicament that we are right now. So the season's a pretty long time, like nine months. Look, just like the casino, you're not going to beat the house. Everything's going to go back to normal. City is now back to normal. Liverpool, this they're underachieving. Are you resigning? No, 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 no. Oh, ready, bro. Match no, day no, no, 29. No, I'm, I'm not. But it, when it comes down to it, oh, shoot. Two. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the day, um, anything can happen. Liverpool can get hot again. Look, if City tie a game and we win a game, it changes again. So it's no, really- look, honestly, I'm with you, Huss. Like, obviously, there's a lot more pressure now, but there's also the relief of like, all right, we're chasing again. Like, you get that motivation of like, all right, we're seen as 
the underdog just the way we like it. It means all the focus is on City to sort of set the pace. That's and what City's Klopp okay lives. with that. Exactly. Klopp, Klopp, Klopp is always, was a Dortmund guy, always letting Bayern set the pace. Not to say that Bayern was leading, like there weren't points in the season where Dortmund was leading, but they always felt better being the underdog. And that's why, like, when they finally got the rest of the league, a.k.a. Bayern, and they won, it meant, like, so much to that Dortmund system, that belief. And he's bringing that to Liverpool where Man City is the Bayern. Like, as much as it pains me to admit that, in our league right now, they're the buy. Not as far as like you know, the gap as far as points, but as far as the even the stats, dude. Like we'll get into their game, but the possession and shots and what I'm afraid though, is insane, dude. So what, what, what I'm afraid Klopp of is where he needs to be. Is not they're not actually Dortmund. I'm afraid that I'm afraid that they're more True. like Atletico Madrid, where there's um, basically Barcelona, AK City. I don't know who Madrid's going to be. It could be United. If they get a few more signings and really uh, make everything right there, I'm afraid that Liverpool is going to become Atletico Madrid, where they're super close. They go to Champions League final. They're always, you know, for uh, sorry, second or third, but they never make that gap. Hey, Atletico won the league. Put some respect on their name, and I think that, that's be a major I, that's... achievement if Klopp does come back and win the league. Even if you guys don't necessarily recapture uh, a Champions League. I see what you're saying, though, Huss, in terms of them being that third place kind of idol-less team. But let's not forget, they did win the league. And Liverpool, for me, the interesting that's happened is your defense is stout. Guys, I mean, like, I think the last three games, you guys have kept clean sheets. Or, like, in your last, like, draws that you had, there have been zero, zero, zero draws. So, Whoa. your defense has been actually pretty legit. And we, I think like, it's my tip and, and these guys, man. But Van Dyke yeah. is helping them back there. Alexander Arnold looked good. Your fullbacks look good going forward. They were at times a little bit shaky defensively, but it's the attackers, man. What's what's gone wrong with the front trio? The, remember last year they scored 10 10 10 in Champions League? What's happened to these guys? So they could be tired because the World Cup was the I mean um you never know because it feels it's like it's pressure though. It feels I don't like think it's it, psychological. It, it could feels be. like they're choking. Like I, I'm, I'm seeing like a drop in confidence in Salah, it, particularly. It could, Not it could be that, or it's the fact that because they did what they did last year, we all think in our brains that they're going to do that again this year. When really, no, they had an outstanding season last year. Maybe they're they're still hitting good numbers had an this year. Season they, this year, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they're just not. Look, look, last year was like out of this world type of numbers for a few of them. Now, if we're going to keep them at this level every single year. I don't think that's possible for this group. They're not – look, we're, they're not messy. They're not serious. They're not, not, not going to see those type of players again for a while. Too but um, I think Salah is going to be the future. He's not going to be messy. He's not going to be Ronaldo. He's going to be a good player. I mean, a really, really good player. Really great player, actually, for the next five, six years. I just don't expect him to be messy, and which everyone thinks he's going to be. No, so, no, no. Two things, two things. One, I think – just going back on your point from earlier, Hush. I don't necessarily agree that you guys were you guys were er, are overachieving. I think after you guys made the Champions League final, I think there was like a sense of intent to go for the league. Especially, you know, like a lot of the questions that were asked were, okay, who's Liverpool going to sign? They need a goalkeeper after Karius. You need a center midfielder. They addressed that by getting bringing in Naby Keita. Uh, you guys brought we in Fabinho, play. and then another point and you said that, too. Yeah, and then speaking of Shakiri, another point you mentioned was, well, maybe they're tired. Well, like. Klopp needs to, like, recognize that, okay, if someone's tired, I have Shakiri to bring on. And Shakiri's no, like, bang average player. Like, he's a very good player as well. So I think – I mean, I'm not trying to knock Klopp. I mean, he's second in the league for a reason. They could go on to win the league for all, I, for all we know. But I just think that I think it's getting to Klopp now. And, like, maybe he does like coming from behind, as you guys have mentioned. But I think he needs to recognize, okay, if Mo Salah isn't – banging if he isn't scoring goals maybe sit him for a game like Mane was the hot hand so you keep Mane in there I don't necessarily agree with Origi starting even though Everton might be his team to play his like good team to play but I think I think you know Shakiri's lack of involvement's one thing um defensively like you guys have defensively like, look, right now you guys have no issues which is like very uh, good for you a little bit um we so the one thing that I was thinking, if you want to take a silver lining from this, is that I saw a report that Pep's going to try and improve in three positions, maybe four. That's going to be tough for them to find players that are better than the ones that they have. Is it really going to be that hard for people to, uh, for Liverpool to find better players that they already have? 
No. No, look, no, I don't so think I, think, I don't think, I think well, I think City is closer to their ceiling than Liverpool is. So that's the silver lining for me for the future. Not not this year, but for the future, I think Liverpool s- still can get five, six, yeah, seven transfers that can make them point. outstanding. I look, I get point. that point, but the thing is, man, the City ceiling is so much higher than normal EPL winner kind of ceiling. Like even when United won, like didn't break 13 records and win by what was it 19 points like that is unheard of in this league so like when pep says he's going to improve in four positions that basically means the guys who are coming in there are going to be world class because he's trying to improve so like the left back position you could bring in a guy like Alex uh alexandro you know what i mean like he could no, bring in man city could get better don't get it twisted exactly man and no, it could yeah, and like, like they could open better. that who, gap back up be- dude who could be better? Not not like versus each other, but who could hit a um, who could? I know what you're saying. The percentage of improvement. Name the a percentage player. of improvement. But like they could they could they could easily just go sign Dybala. There's rumors of Dybala not being a little bit unhappy at Juventus and Allegri's jobs on the line, and they're gonna finance that to bring say? in more transfers this summer. Like they, Dybala they to Man City, in, bro. Yeah, in, but who they, who did they, he? Who, who do they sit to make uh, make City? It doesn't matter. Play? They just rotate. They just Kevin De Bruyne just went out with a knee injury. Like Why you just it? rotate the ball in. Like it did, like they play so many games that matches aren't like a question. If you look at him right now, like Mares is starting to get playing time again. Gabi Jesus now that he's back from injury, he's going to be rotated out for um, for uh, Aguero because they're in major tournaments. So like the players will come. De Bruyne will come in. No, he'll have to fight. But he's going to be, at the end of the season, fighting for a Premier League title. He's going to be competing for a Champions League. So he most likely would be willing to fight in the Pep system, especially because, you know, like, it's a very, like, strict system. And if that's your style of play, that creative, small space guy, you're going to excel in that. Look at Bernardo Silva. He looks incredible. But let's not make this about City. If you can think of a player, they can get him. Yeah, man. They can get anyone they want in the world right now. Well, actually, going going on what you said, Tiki, actually kind of brings us back to – um, the rebuttal that Snacks had to me where you, where he said that Liverpool weren't overachieving. Before Liverpool faced City, they're on pace to have the most EPL points ever. Ever. So yes, they were overachieving. They're, they, they didn't lose a single game and now they're coming back to reality. Yes, they shouldn't have a draw against Leicester or something like that. They should have won those games, but the the draw versus United, that that's that's normal. Yeah, that's, draw, right. yeah, that's, that's a good legit. point. That's this a good year, point. Right now, this year they had a win and a draw versus Everton. On a normal year, that that's yeah okay. We, we understand that. I think yeah, but the issue the issues that the issues that this is not a normal year, house. The issues that this is a year like Liverpool. A lot of pundits, smart pundits out there, including Tom, picked them to win. And it's looking like it was a legit choice. That's why this is different. This is like the Gerard slip year, where like maybe at the beginning of the season, I was like, okay, Liverpool's going to be good. We think they're going to compete. And then they actually start competing. This is where Liverpool usually stumbles, man. You guys have put together brilliant teams. The Fernando Torres days, um, the, uh, the Suarez days as well, like the Michael Owen days. You guys have put in teams where like you finish second and you just miss it. The issue is that, Liverpool has been here before, and they've had talented teams. And you could argue this is probably, on paper, the most talented team they've ever had. But again, you're starting to see these typical Liverpool cracks, the same yeah, cracks. They have everything that, they need to win the league. And except know, mental. Okay, a except bit, depth. You need more depth, right? So, so you may need a little bit more depth. Depth and mental. Position. Like You need you need but, winners in there who know like what it takes. Like Just one right, or two I, guys yeah, yeah. I who like, will motivate the guys right now. Like Henderson was saying... You know, similar to Gerard, don't let it slip. I, I I forget what he was trying to. He was basically trying to play that role of motivator, and then they draw in the Merseyside derby. So like, you're starting to see these cracks where like it's the same Liverpool. Look, this is the best chance they have to win. I'm not saying they're not going to win the league, but the same way we give Spurs shit for like, oh, you guys are hot, but you don't win shit. Liverpool, I think, has played that trend too. And dude, no, about it's Liverpool, legit too. You guys have a major Champions League game coming up against Bayern Munich who just went top of Bundesliga. You know, Dortmund dropped points, you know, and, and now Bayern look like they're they have some confidence coming in. So, this is a this is a trying time in the season overall for the so, oh, I think with I think in the context of the situation what I meant by you weren't overachieving is I think City just kind of reformulated how to win the Premier League. Like Yeah, man. To be honest, if you look at it like 
now teams are starting to like I guess Man United started it or Man City actually started back in like 2011. Like to win the league, it's getting the most like most expensive players, the best players you can get, and going gung ho pretty much the entire season. Obviously, like there's obviously some games you're gonna drop off. It's 38 games over a Premier League season. Like you're not gonna win them all. And we've seen City lose to some pretty average to below average teams this season. So it's not always going to work out, but I think City last year specifically reformulated how to win the league. And that's like by scoring the most goals, like against who are they playing in the, like, I know this isn't the league, but again, in the Carabao cup semifinal Burton, they scored yeah. nine goals. They scored nine goals, bro. <laughs> they scored literally. And, and like, I, that's not surprising. Cause it's no like mercy. third or yeah, fourth man. division just... team. It's that's the thing. And so it's like, when you tell me, well, Liverpool were on pace to get the most Premier League points. It's like okay, like in the in terms of history, yeah, that's great. But like in terms of winning the league, that like, that's what you got to strive for. That's what you got to go for. Yeah, and I think with the really recruitments that you around. guys, what was that? I'll agree with you that the right now it's a different league than it has. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like when Man United, like when Arsenal were went invincible, they finished with like eighty something points. This isn't to knock Arsenal's invincibles, but like when Arsenal did what? One, you know, you guys went invincible. Oh, all right. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? So, like, now, like, instead of 80, because, like, I think Tom Tiki has said it actually a bunch of times on the show, like, 81 points, like, five or six years ago was enough points to win the league when United yeah, finished second with 81 points. Like, it's different now. You need to have 90 points. You need to get to 100 points. Well, and stuff yeah, like the game that. has changed, right? So, the game used to be more defensive. But really, but, if you're watching this game, the way Martin Atkinson was refing it, man wasn't calling anything. So, I love it, man. That's more so what the game used to be like, defensive game. Like, Defenders were really held, you know, in in higher regards back then. Now, yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to give context to my point as to like why I think Liverpool aren't underachieving. Like, I think like all things considered, they're either where they're at or just under where they're supposed to be. I think they were easily favorites to win the Premier League. Like me and you, Tom, we picked them to win the league this no, year. Man, I, I look, think this right is big city. Don't say easily yeah. favorites. Well, like I mean, they were easily one of the favorites. One of the yeah, favorites. one of two. Yeah, yeah, one of the. Two p- teams that could actually win, especially when you consider their recruitment. Absolutely. No, no, so no. I think, yeah, I think with all that considered, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, the rest of the games. It's this is nine it. Game. So, oh. Yeah, that quote, real quick. Henderson said, "Oh no, Klopp said that this team is the team that it's going to be the hardest for them to win it. But if they win it, it's going to make it easier for the next generations to come." And that's what like United that's did. That's what City's doing right now. Like Phil Foden can go into a match now and play with an S on his chest because he's like, I'm surrounded by winners. Worst comes to worst, Aguero's gonna get it, or you do, know, whoever's do, gonna. Do get you it. remember that the first time Man City won the league, like in a, in a long, yeah. long time? Aguero, know, bro, it came down to the wire. That literally tipped the That's scales it. of That's history. That literally if was that, it. If that doesn't happen, if Aguero doesn't <laughs> score that goal, and Phil Jones is celebrating. Like the year, they're yeah, probably man. like a year or two off of where they are now. That them winning for the first time in that long changed everything. And this, this everything. is the cusp that Liverpool currently sits That's on. That's it. That's so it. It, it will be majorly disappointing for you guys. Yes, you weren't expected to win. So I yeah, I see what you're saying, Snacks. Like the the, the level of ex- expectation maybe may be different, but dude, you have this is it, man. You this can is it to win, and if you don't, it'll be it'll be disappointing. <laughs> right? You had that chance. So great. Huss, you guys had that it'll chance. Be so great. Team. If you, you had, had that any, chance in 2014, Huss, you can't can't let us up by if again. You, Biggest if you, uh, case if you football, talk to any yeah. Liverpool fan and you said, "Look, here's the thing. <laughs> the nervous said, cucks. If we said that Mar- uh, March 3rd, you're one point behind City, and no other team is around you guys. Are you happy with that?" Every single Liverpool fan in August would say we would like that. It's just that we were up at points, and now guess what? No nah, man, had, they nah, had their us, dips, they us. Had their We had no. our ups, and then we had our dips. No, no way, dude. Based, based on goals. based on pundit picks to win the league, this year was different. Last year, like sure, I said, man, Liverpool said they fan. would have taken. It. Nah, yes, man. Yes. You ask the average fan from Liverpool, from the city of Liverpool, if they're happy with being they, one no point where nobody. No way, else, not when they're like, this close. I, if you ask them in August, I think they're okay. No ask way. Them in August, they were already August, second. In August, they were already – but no, even in August, they were either going to be first or second. Like, City and Liverpool were the favorites. So, like, if you asked them in August, they would have been like, yeah, motherfucker, that's, that's where I expected to be. That's not like, thing. not like, yeah, we'll take it. No fucking way. You guys, this is the year for the league. Mourinho said it. I don't know why there's this protection of Liverpool as far as, like, putting the pressure on them. 
like this you spent half a billion dollars you've yeah. kicked man united to the curb for now as far as you know not one-on-one -on -one results but as far as your performances like dude this is the year if you guys slip this year you Odds are Salah's going to leave in one or two years. The team's going to break apart again, and you're going to have to rebuild. You know what it is, Tiki? You know what it is? Because they uh, – and this happens with a lot of people. So it's not just like Liverpool fans. It's like they don't want to like set that expectation so that if – Yeah, worst fucking comes cowards. To, if if, if per, push comes to shove, they don't want to be told like, oh, you guys are wrong, this, that. They don't want to deal with the abuse, man. That's, it happens with an all No, man. no, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think – It is, man. You guys are so like, – No, no, I think – You guys are so it, like jinxy McJinxer. I think it's just because the fact that – it's been so long since Liverpool have won. Yeah, you've gone superstitious. Yeah, it's, it's not, no, it's fucking not even socks. It's not even a – let's not set the standard. It's just if we come in second, look, we're not happy. Us. We're this not, is we're the year where season. that we're opinion is different. No, 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 that's where it's at. And, and honestly, it's like a he's, trying to lay some, <laughs> he's trying to lay some <laughs> blankets, bro. If, if, Klopp want, if Klopp want to change things, the first thing he needs to do is stop blaming – other things than the team, like the weather, like the, the, the fucking wet, weather, the, rain, dude. <laughs> the wind, the snow, the pitch, the trap. Oh, like, come on, look at us, please. Like, it gets to the point where, dude, like, I love you, Klopp. Like, you're my man, but come on, they just stand up, they're like, yeah, we sucked. Yeah, we played bad. We get it. Guess what? We're gonna do our best next game. Don't worry about that. Like, I just can't stand the fact that, well, the wind didn't help this game. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, well, guess what? The the wind probably helped the game uh, last time we faced Everton when Virgil hit the top of the crossbar and rolled across and Origi put it in. You didn't say, oh, well, the wind helped us this game. No, you said. I mean, the rain doesn't help in Manchester, like, bro. Like, so it's, it's, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't use that as an excuse. It. Just accept it and move on. Lucky as shit. Look, man, Marco Silva, he was under a lot of heat, man. This is a good result for him. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, the, are you, are you going to get into the game? Before we get to the game, I want you to ponder this question right now. <laughs> if Liverpool do not loan out Klein to Bournemouth, are they above Man City right now? No. Not necessarily. No. When, I know, I know what you're saying. Right I don't down, know. If, yeah, that's the Henderson, better answer. If Mil Henderson was playing right back. Milner was playing right where it was okay. Fabinho played well, but Henderson played right back, and yeah. he was the reason why they let up a goal in that game. That's why my answer is I don't know. Yeah, I don't oh, know. How it's, yeah, it's hard. All right, man. And we talk about depth the whole time, and they said away the <laughs> They have like one player. They have like one player. At, oh my god! Oh cool. Yeah, got no, way that loan happened yeah. that hey, way, man. Can we just loan out Moreno to like like anyone? I don't even know. The, 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 the <laughs> little, oh my god! For this Liverpool so, garbage, how frustrated it. You see, it, see, you're, you're choking like they are. You can't even make up your mind. I'm not what even saying. Right, just frustration. <laughs> it just, it's just the Liverpool way, man. Choke City. Take a sip of the drink, us. Yeah, Spurs, honestly, <laughs> it's just oh. Spurs won. Aussie no one. The North London Aussie derby no. here. Come on, Arsenal. No. Who are they again? Bro, you, you're, you're celebrating like you won something, game. Tom. If you you're celebrating watched, like you won. I don't want to hear from you guys. You, you guys all just chirp, chirp, chirping, all right? If you watched this game, dominated this game, this was so close <laughs> to being a tactical masterpiece by Unai Emery, all right? This was this was on Mustafi's shoulders. This unnecessary-ass penalty kick, well, maybe necessary. He's very desperate to get it. It... Anyways, it was, it was frustrating as shit. Was he offsides? Was he onsides? I, I, I've had it different. I've had it interpreted differently. I don't know what to say of it, whether he's onsides or offsides, man. When the ball's kicked, he's definitely offsides. But here's the interpretation of the rule, right? Because it's been changed to now a player must touch the ball or, like, really be involved in the play, the FA is apparently coming out saying that it's le a legitimate penalty kick because the foul occurred before the player was even able to engage the ball. Yeah, you know what it is, Tom? It's an off-the-ball foul. You know what I mean? So, like, it's like in a corner, just because the ball's not coming to you. If someone, like, bear hugs you, like, it's a foul. So, like, Harry Kane wasn't active yet because he hadn't gone after the ball. Obviously, but we he, know if he wasn't pushed, he yeah, was to get to it. But then yeah. that's when the liner would have flagged. That's oh. when the liner would have flagged as soon as Harry Kane touched it. Well, I can't assume that, but let's say he caught the offside. He would have flagged right there. 
but Mustafi didn't even allow it to get to that point. So he fouled. It was an off the ball foul. Simple it was, foul. It was a few moments, of lapses in discipline that really cost Arsenal in this game. I know Torreira also got a red card, um, which it was a legit red card. Obama Yang missing the PK. Like, Ugo. that's my dude, man. Like, Ugo. I love Obama you know, Dude, Obama Yang missing the PK, Lacazette being cowish. Like, these are the oh. type of games, man, that are just, like, you got to sort them out next year with some signings where just the pressure's on, on, on you guys to, like, improve on the season. This is a game you guys should have won, Look, maybe even three to one. Stroke of genius to start Aaron Ramsey. Honestly, when I looked at, like, the starting lineup, you put in dudes who were going to bust their ass, and you said coming in, Emery, like, Look, man, I need, I need. This is the balanced team. I need them to work hard off the ball and to to execute the plan that we have. And it was clear that we, we weren't gonna let him play. We're gonna mark Erickson as much as we could out of the game, force him into wide areas. Guendozi, I thought, did a good job of that. Torreira, I thought, was straight up man marking him second half. So like, I could see the strategy. I could see, and even the substitutes. We bring in Ozil. We bring in Aubameyang, who was a third. Um, we bring in Torreira as well. So you know, like. That's, that's, you know, the, the, there was a debate should Obama Yang and Lacazette start at the same time. I thought this was so close to being a tactical masterpiece by Unai Emery. But Mustafi just causing the PK, man. And then Obama Yang missing it. Like, yeah, look, I don't know. I, I think this was great tactical choice. I don't know if it was quite a masterpiece, but he did do the right thing by if putting one. It is, it's, you know, it's uh, look, one of those I don't things. I don't even know, man, because. Look, I think Spurs had their chances too. Obviously, you guys had more chances. You were in control of the game, but it's not like Spurs were just played off the park. For me, that's a masterpiece when you like just you handcuff the other team. Maybe not even possession play off the park, but just like you just hamstring the other team. And like that wasn't the case here, but it was on a tactical battle. He did win the tactical battle. There's no question. I just don't know if I'm ready to give him masterpiece. But Mick Terrian, Tom, keep telling you this guy, man, like. I know he's got that Man United sauce on him, so, like, it's hard for you to ingrain him, but Bro, I'm not yeah, saying this guy was going to be world-class. This guy can ball, man. He can come in and make a difference. He Yo, can start putting a shift. Like a ground Dude, ground outside oh, yeah. Tom, Tom, through Tom, ball. Tom's now, wait, Tom's now involved because I remember, like, two months ago, you and I got into a heated argument about Mkhitaryan. I was saying he should start. You're like, nah, this guy sucks. No, <laughs> that was the fucking, that was the oh, Man United Awobi, juice, bro. Awobi, Awobi special. Mkhitaryan sucks. <laughs> Awobi was yeah, bro. Guess what? Awobi, and uh, I won't tell you what he can do, but I just, I'm I'm just saying, dude, you've got to give Mickey a chance because yeah, we've man. already seen it at Dortmund. We've already seen it at little glimpses, though. At United. At United. Yeah, definitely. When he first came into United, it was like, oh, dang. Uh-oh. And then he started, uh, was it last season? He started the first like five, six games just like red hot. Now, if he can extend that though, yes, his consistency can be debatable. That's my thing with him. That's no, no, that's my thing. Like, that's who, 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 who on Arsenal is not, who right, so on Arsenal besides like, the bombing is consistent? That's a good point. Five games. Well, Nobody but a bombing. And obviously, because he missed the PK, maybe a bombing is not consistent either. He's saying everyone's inconsistent in Arsenal. So it's not like we're not sitting here saying Mkhitaryan's an automatic start. But the way Emery is using him, I think is perfect, man. Start him in some games. Some of them are important. Some of them are, you know, beat up games. He doesn't, he's a ro perfect rotation player. That's why I wanted him to stay at United. He was never going to, you know, uh, upset Martial or Rashford as far as like position starting. But like Love every that. once I'm in a while, that. this is that dude who can actually make like a piece of class difference. He, he definitely can, and clearly we don't have the depth in the wing position. Like, he's he can actually go out there and implement what Emery wants. Yeah, because he's got the got speed as well. Hell, I would take him over a region. So, for me, what I'm seeing is I, I think we need an upgrade. Oh, for sure. For no, now, for sure. Obviously, like, I'll, I'll deal with the dealer's hand. Like, this is the hand that's been You need an upgrade. No, you, didn't even, you, you didn't even oh, want him there. That, that was my beef. Like, it wasn't that no. you... There's no way to. There's no need to gas Mkhitaryan. Like he's gonna be, he's gonna be. But like you didn't even want him at the club, bro. No, That's what I'm like. Dude, Yo, what up, bro? Because we lost Alexi Sanchez, and like, uh, it looks know, like you guys are winning that trade. Yeah, you guys are winning that trade, bro. Switch. But if he had stayed at Arsenal, 
who really who would have won the trade if there was one that was never Tom, made. Tom, Tom. You know, I don't know, bro. Lexi was struggling that year, yeah, man. Look, look, let's not make it all about Mick Mick and not the problem. You're right. You're right. Let's, let's not make it all about Quit man. man. Thanks, man. Get rid of it. Play us. They literally had to makeshift Mustafia right back to not put the quicksand yeah. man in. Listen, man, Aaron Ramsey is the wrong person you guys are letting go because that yeah. man ran from half, rounded the keeper, puts it in in his final North London Derby, bro. I don't know what – I don't care how much Juventus are paying him. Another great tactical call. In those big games, Ramsey – he does show up. Like, he might be inconsistent at times, but he shows up. Maybe he's not worth four hundred grand that Juventus Look. are paying him. But, but the fact that Ramsey's leaving – and Ozil stays is just like it's mind blowing to me. And I'm, and Ozil has been picking up some good form the past couple of games. So maybe it, I, I understand why he didn't start him. He didn't o- feel like look, Ozil was look, good. Ozil's a better player than Aaron Ramsey, bro. Flat out. No, no, no it's it's true. But That's like, why he's staying. So yeah. No, to me, it's not that hard to. So then, why is Ozil not playing the big games? Because we know who he is in terms of his ethic. Right, work the ethic. Field. So how like, does how does that make Ramsey's it okay? So talent snack. wise, so talent wise, sure he can be as good. But if you're not going to put that to work, then you're not better than someone, bro. There's how many that's, freestyle? That's not true. How many? That's not true. How many freestyle? How many freestyle footballers are on YouTube that can do more skill than half of the professionals out there, but don't have a professional contract, bro? That okay, work. So you're talking about two professional footballers, not one freestyle, right? So that's a horrible. All analogy. I know, all all I'm saying is that Aaron Ramsey scored and started this game, and Ozil didn't. Yeah, okay, like, so he doesn't Ozil doesn't fit this manager's style of play. We know that. But does that make him who's a better player? And especially considering the circumstance of Aaron Ramsey leaving in the summer for free, like going forward, Ozil's a more important player for Arsenal and he's a better technical player. Now, I get this is why it was a stroke of genius, I think, by Emery realizing that okay, Ozil's not gonna give us that work rate that we need to try shut down Christian Eriksen or whoever's the six for Spurs and put the pressure on him. So also, you can't start this game. And I think that Emery's now beginning to handle that situation well. It's Ozil knows what it is, and he's breaking it down to him. So, so do you think – do you think – oh, man, my camera's off. Hold on one sec. So do you think it's worth the money you're spending to have a guy who's going to play two-thirds of the games? Like, obviously, you know his strengths is attacking, but couldn't you ship that guy off? I don't think we're in the position off? to replace that guy. Guys, okay. if, I, if, if Arsenal could go out and buy any player in the world, yeah, I got you. Ozil's not the, our number one choice. But if you look at how he can break down teams, because we often talk about, oh, you don't have to beat any of the top six to go on and win the league, right? Ozil's a guy who, against a Burnley, he can break them down. Yes, but you're back. also easy to break you know? down when he's on the field as well. Yeah, sure. he is. But, but, and that's what you have to ask. Is he more good than bad, Mesut Ozil? I still believe he's more good than bad. So... I mean, I and also you can factor in like I just going off of Tiki's point. Like you free up those wage budgets, bi- wage budgets. English, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you free up his wages off the budget, like sh- I'm not saying you're gonna get an Ozil level player, but you'll get a player like at least like an Aaron Ramsey. And Aaron Ramsey is a quality player. There's a reason why Juve are spending 400k to bring him in. He is, is it, that's a, that's my he's, opinion. You know what no, I mean? He, he's a quality player, but he's and there's not rumors and there's rumors linking you guys to Kai Havertz at Leverkusen, and I, that kid's a baller. So like, a, yeah, you but know what I mean? And like he plays in Ozil's position. Like I mean, obviously he's like eleven why, years why old. Why not bring in him both? Why not keep an experienced German na- international like Ozil, and then try to bring on a young Kai Havertz? I know we well we can't afford it. So if, if that's the that's case, the problem, and that's the, the problem, dunk, like. In a perfect world, I would assume you would you obviously you would want to have Ozil and Kai Havertz. Let's just use him as an example. But like, yeah. bro, for three hundred and fifty grand a week, like it's it's almost not worth it. Like if he was playing week in week out, like he was when he had that twenty assist yeah. season, obviously it would point. be worth it. Obviously it would be worth Dude, it. But I like just think, right I think we have to look at the long at the at the at the big picture and and consider all. So you're that, that that are going on for sure, man. For sure. So you're an Ozil in guy for now. Yeah, yeah, man. It's because for for a couple of different reasons, I don't think we can replace him. Number one, and he still is. Look, man, when he's on, there's no denying he's he's one of the best at what he does, and that's creating chances. Like, yeah, but it, it's like a double edged sword as well. Like, because like Haas was saying, like you guys are vulnerable when he said he doesn't have a great work ethic. Like, it's just a recipe for disaster at times. Like other times, sell him to China. Man, you to China. Even choose when to play him. 
Just pick That's probably where you should go, Huss. Yeah. That's a good shot, 50 man. Mil. Sell them to China, bro. 50 mil. See you later, Ozil. Go to China. Get 50, 50 mil. mil. They'll pay 90 mil for him because of the jerseys they'll sell, bro. Hey, man. Shaka can go before Ozil can go. But, yeah. uh, Guess what? Leno, no, Ozil, Shaka, Shaka goes for free. Buy one, get one free right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get Shaka, no, 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 no. Shaka will sick, actually double save. drive him there. You see Leno's sick double save in this game, man? Yeah, he's, he's proven he's proven oh, us wrong, he's man. He's had like two highlights all year. Right before halftime, <laughs> yeah, and you guys been shitting on him all year, man. I've been and other teams, he's been shitting on him, bro. No, I've been nervous, you know, but I'm glad that he's actually getting this experience, man. He's got to go through the fire. This is the fire that EPL is your first North London derby, and I thought he played well, man. His first, he played in the two previous or the one previous in the league when you guys won. All right, my bad. Oh, yeah, and another and another and another fact Bayern is second on goal difference, Dortmund's still number one. So hey, tied. look at you. <laughs> Boom. All right, man. North London Derby, a draw. I think solid result for United. Um, we'll get into them in a second, but let's get into Bournemouth, Man City. That's right. Man City being Manchester's <laughs> blue. Yeah, above Arsenal, bro. Above Arsenal. I honestly thought Bournemouth had a chance. I was watching this. Dude, and I was like, Who come on. Last week? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when? What, no, no, when no, was I, that? I'm not saying I oh, actually yeah. thought they really had a chance, chance. It was just like, oh my God, 0 0 still? No, Huss, like, Huss, I'm with you. I thought this was going to be one of those, like, the gods are just on Bournemouth's side. Because oh, let's no, talk no, about no, these no. stats, man. Absolutely insane. 23 shots to zero, 82% <laughs> possession, 91% pass success for Man City. Like, this is FIFA when Four you're playing corners. on, like, semi-pro. 14, 14 corners, bro. Zero. Like, Amateur. this was the most dominant game, I think, of the EPL, and they win one nothing, bro. This is the sign of a champion. This is where the all the other teams, including United, would s- probably struggle here to get a result, like, being this dominant. We were like that under Jose when... uh. When Burnley had that crazy game where the goalie Heaton made like 27 saves. And then Lee Grant did it the next week when we played Stoke. Exactly, man. But City, bring in Mares, a guy who hasn't been really getting minutes. He comes on. He scores the winner, dude. Like, this is the frustrating thing. Uh, A lot of them should have had some fucking goals here, man. Take a moment. Take a moment real quick. Just try to fathom that. Playing 90 minutes and having 18% possession. It's insane, dude. <laughs> like, like g- guys are probably like getting cold and like they're just like, oh, they th- guys are probably only having like maybe two touches all game. You know when they bring it like the first team usually trains and then they'll bring in like the under 23s just to like oh. shadow <laughs> players right before big games. That's what happened. Dude, That's they had happened. 16 minutes of possession in 90 in a 90 minute game. 16. 16- Minutes of possession, bro. And, and you know, oh like Bournemouth, Bournemouth isn't like Cardiff, right? They're not the team. Or like exactly. Leicester, You're right. Leicester, where they were like, all right, let's sit back and give up, freely give up. No, like they want to try dominate the ball, Bournemouth, but they just had no chance. No chance, bro. City, no, they're in a title race now. This is the advantage of having champions on your team. These guys know right now is when you put your head down and you just start pumping your legs. And if it doesn't come from Aguero, if it doesn't come from Sterling, the Silver Boys, De Bruyne, it's going to come from someone off the bench, be it Sané, Mares in this case, or Jesus. Like, just everyone knows what the fuck they're supposed to do, and when it's time to do it, they do it, man. It's it's impressive, dude. Pep Guardiola is the fucking man. It's the worst watching him turn the city fucking blue, bro. Klopp got cold feet. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. He's standing hustle up at the altar. <laughs> yeah, he, he is, dude. He's standing hustle. Yeah. That flower I was just like, yeah, well, I expected this. This has happened to me before, so I expected it. Yeah, no, dude, I didn't even go to the yeah. wedding. I didn't even go to the wedding. I'm at the bar by myself, <laughs> myself into my glass. That's so all untucked. No, nah, but shout out to I didn't even get I'm there naked. I just fuck it. forget the suit. I just knew what was going to happen. Forget it. Shout out to Bournemouth, man. Going down one nothing here. They almost. Caused a massive upset to Liverpool a favor, but they get three points here. Nathan Ake, bro, this kid I think is next. Really? He needs another. Yeah, man, I think he needs one more season at Bournemouth. Like, dude, he's starting to feel like, look, not as far as talent wise, but as far as importance to a team, he's starting to feel like Virgil Van Dyke at Southampton. Like, when this kid is back here, there's no fuckery at all. Uh, like, of course they lose here and there. They lose here and there because the quality of the team, there's a lot to work on. But when Ake 
like Ake doesn't get beat, dude. Like, and he commands that back line. He commands that know, defense. Man. I don't know, Rashford, Rashford, freaking, freaking, the Elastico there on the edge. Yeah, but like, oh, come yeah, on, man. Gonna dudes are going to get beat. Dudes well, are going to get beat, man. Vinicius will get beat. I'll back Ake up. Um, I won't say he doesn't get beat because it's just in the nature of the position to get no, yeah, yeah, yeah. roasted at times. I, th- I, th- I think what you mean man. to say is he his tackle success rate is That's great. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But look, man, no, if you're getting eaten by Rashford, it doesn't make you a bad player, bro. Rashford's no, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I, was just, I was just contradicting your point, though. Gotcha, just, gotcha. It's like, ah, oh, Rashford, I don't know, man. Well, he, no, no, he's no, been through a lot, man. Look, I'm not even saying the Rashford part. I'm just saying that there have definitely been times where Okay, he's either been out of position or he's made a dumb play. He's, a look, he's 24 years old, so I'll definitely, I'll definitely say if you want to give him one more year, that's fine to see how he is because he'll be 25, 26 years old. Uh, that's what I said. One or two more years. Time, 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 man. Really you can see on that. But it's just, left back. You can see the ascension house is all I'm saying. He's not ready. He's definitely not fucking ready to make a move. But I'm saying like I'm seeing his progression – and in two or three years, if he keeps going the way he's gonna go, he's going to top six easy, maybe even the top three. Yo, he's easy, gotta bro. Be, he's gotta be related to Rude Hulet, right? Like, yeah, with that hair, bro. <laughs> he's gotta be. <laughs> and, love uh, that hair. Look, and, and again, I'm I'm also saying like right now we're sitting Liverpool or sitting. I'm talking like, is he ready for that, or is he actually ready for like you know replacing Mustafi? Yeah, but in two or three years, he could okay, he could replace hey, Mustafi, that. but like that would be like him being given the reins, like. Like, uh, what's his name? Van Dyke going to Liverpool and being given the reins. Like, you can go into a team that has an average back line and as a 25, 26, 27-year-old center back be given the reins. Like, all right, we're going to build this back line off you. Ake would be solid there. He could go back to Chelsea um, once uh, their back line kind of falls apart with David Luiz getting older and full of mistakes. Dude, City, I don't know if he's got the footwork for it, but, like, I think he's a guy who could potentially work at City because he's a Dutch kid. He knows the position. He mid, bro. He came up playing D mid. He can play left back. Like, he can dribble. He can... Keep an eye on this kid, man. He's not ready. I would see one more year. Maybe, look, if he did want to go to... No, that's exactly what I said. One or two years, bro. You know, I agree with you on that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, if he went to a Liverpool, I'd be intrigued because, yes, is he probably better than Matip next year? It's going to be even. I think. Yeah, let's get it. Just don't sleep on Matip, guys. Yeah, yeah man. Right? Uh, no, but uh, let's, sleep on let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about that shot real quick for, from uh, Mara. Yeah, let's it's, talk it's about what it. I'm talking about where that's like the type of shot that I'm like, whoa, how did that go in? Of all the chances, that's the one that goes in near post when there was like a sliver of space. I yeah. mean, that that's the frustrating part where they played so well all game. No, I wouldn't say so well like the dominant, but so well as in the clean sheet, except for that one little hiccup by the keeper letting near post. That's what and, happens, man. That's what happens. Touch the side. Oh. Discipline. Yeah, that, man. That one kills me. At this level is everything. And yeah, man. Uh, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately for the rest of the competitors in the league, Kevin De Bruyne suffers uh, an injury blow here. This I think they're saying it's a lost season hamstring. for him, bro. It's just a lost season. Just yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to, man. Like, if, if you got a knee injury, usually other things get all busted up because, like, you just haven't worked that entire leg, you know? So, like, it often lingers into hamstring, groin, and all that fun stuff. So, they better take care of this before it becomes a legit problem. Yeah, I think he'll be fine, man. He'll be fine. Maybe well, take the rest of the season well, off. Man, they should, should shut him hey, down now. Hey, they should think about Strootman from Roma. Like, look, he had one injury, then another yeah. injury, then another. Injury. Then, yeah, it wasn't sure, all man. right at the same time. It was like one, every single year he had. Yeah, it's like, company you know, as well. How they dropped off when KDB was out? They dropped off a little bit. Like, they, I know. Yeah, they yeah, but yeah, right? but didn't Aguero get suspended? They didn't have the, like the same luster on them, man. Well, KDB's just it's that's just the importance of Kevin De Bruyne. Like, he's just that good. You know what I mean? I think I think in the long term, City <laughs> will be. Yeah, I think in the long term, City will be fine. I mean, they David Silva can still ball, Bernardo Silva can you know go Look, back and, there and do a, a job. And that's the thing, man. They've lived, learned to live without him, Tom. Yeah, when he first went out, like early in the year, like you could see the drop off. But like you knew, this team is a system team. Like they were gonna figure it out. Gundogan's gonna step up for an ind- like you knew it was never gonna be that big a drop off. But for sure, man, they. They definitely missed a Bruyne, and that's part of the reason they're gonna go into the summer window and just buy like studs, man. Guys who they, when they're De Bruyne goes Fernandinho. out, I think that's the biggest one. Oh, they're for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. And well, definitely, well, that's the big one. And then the center back for company. Well, yeah. Pep already said that for Fernandinho, 
if he can transfer to center back nicely, he has another four years or so at City because he can maybe take over that company part where he has the experience, yeah, he has definitely. the captain ability. But um, right now, Kevin De Bruyne, let's say there was a fantasy draft of EPL. Is he still top five pick even this year with his injuries? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, just because yeah, yeah, of the numbers. Yeah, just because of numbers. Nothing personal. Literally, just because of the numbers. I think. I think next season, if you would ask that question, then yeah, he's st- in my opinion, he's still a top five. Last player. year, last year he definitely was. No, one hundred percent. But like next year, going into, let's just say they shut him down for the rest of the season. Next year, you know, ESPN yeah, or snacks. whatever. ESPN and them come out with their predictions. Who's going to be top five in a fantasy draft? Kevin De Bruyne's between. Well, no, I'm not talking like fantasy draft as in like uh like uh fantasy like Premier League. Uh, no, like, like fantasy I'm draft like, 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 like no, I'm talking about like fantasy draft as in we're starting a team. Well, stop it, saying fantasy. Yeah, yeah, he's still a top five. He's still got quality. <laughs> I think. I, I don't think the no, injuries he's nuts. had. Yeah, I don't think the injuries he's had are going to be. I mean, like obviously in the long term it might be detrimental, but like his immediate impact, I think he'll he's young enough to still come back and still do work. For sure, man. All right, let's keep it moving, City. Chugging along, top of the league. Uh, Liverpool chasing them. Man United 3, Southampton 2. Another test passed for young Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, I think you're the only person that's ever said his name like that, bro. I think Norwegians say his name like that, bro. Oh, okay. But, man... Snacks, what you got to say here, bro? Fucking pie in your face, man. How's I'm it, let, how's it feel when United Lukaku, wins and you still get pie in your Lukaku. face, bro? Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to let, let everyone, good. everyone, everyone get your points out now so that when I get to my part, I can just not be interrupted. So if you got to say I, I something. Got you, I got you, no. Snacks. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, Snacks is a troll. He lives under a bridge, right? Sometimes <laughs> he gets lost. So what he'll do is he'll get mad. He'll get mad. He'll just start trolling. He'll start nah, trolling man. Nah, he's man. He's escorted to his bridge. Yeah. Tom, Tiki, Tiki, what you gotta say? You're, you're trying. No, to- this is a conversation, bro. This is not fucking sitting here on a podium uh, <laughs> and just fucking like chatting debate. away. Yeah, yeah man. This, this right is now. Debate, bro. I'll this right now. The whole time we're talking through the text mes- messages and snacks will re- is relentless with. Rel- oh, he's, a, he's he's just he's a he's a stats patter. Lukaku is <laughs> just all about the stats patter. But guess what? If if Mr. Statspad is not playing this game, you lose this game and you're out seven Thank you, bro. That's Thank such you. such a hated term. It is such a hated term, bro. That means you get mad ducats. I'm not going to give you credit. <laughs> Thank you, bro. It's the Cavani it's effect. It's our grapes, bro. It's the Cavani effect. Scoring 50 goals, but none of them mean anything. Uh, <laughs> no, none of them you mean anything. Goals. That's all you do. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen, man. Listen, guys. At the end of the day, listen. it's like Ronaldo scoring like seven goals against some international <laughs> team just so he can pad his stats. Listen, yeah, man. Yeah, at the end of the day, we get the day. Listen, PG by fourteen goals, dude. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> it's PG. They're, they're best known for their water. <laughs> what, man? I'm gonna tell you what. You hate it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man. At the end of the day. I said it last season. I've said it this season. When he gets, a, when he has a good performance, I will credit him. Brilliant performance. I I feel like I keep saying this, but like, that's not the fucking beef here, bro. No, yeah, man. I know what the beef, beef is. I know what the beef is. It's just like, of course, if he's a hat end trick, end you can't sit there and say he sucks. Like, so you do have to eat the dirt. That's not the debate. At the end of the day, man. At the end of the day, it's just that, like, I, I, what about the fucking one, day, bro? It, we won, and we won because of him. But it was Southampton, a team that is in a relegation battle. And I know, yeah, bro. Like, I know how fine for losing to teams like this, bro. Know, so let's. Like, why are you acting like we're coming off this high, like, high fucking Bro, uh, performance? You, let me ask you a question. How can you rate a player that every year consistently goes on, like, a 10 to 20 game goal drought and you're we a striker and you're worth 75 now? How can you rate that? Like, that's my, my thing, question. If Rashford does this, oh, my God, Rashford's amazing. Oh, my God. If Thank you. Does it, oh, my God. You just – you. you you're impartial. It's personal. You're prejudiced. Oh, he's the, the best center midfield in the world. Man. Look at that. He hit that with the back of his head into the net. Oh, my God. It's mind-blowing. And you know what it is, guys? <laughs> Lukaku, he, he's weird. He's, a, he's an enigma in a lot of ways. Not in a lot of ways. In some ways, you look at his game aesthetically. It's not the prettiest game. No, Sometimes it's not. he's got the raw pass. Sometimes you've got the raw touch. But is there more good than bad? Thank is you, there Tom. More class, <clears throat> is there more consistency than not? And not, yes, not is, true, man. though. There is no consistency. Right? No, it's it's that is true because Rashford went through a drought as well. Like, forwards go through droughts. Harry Kane, 
Harry Kane took fucking, uh, what was it, September or August off August, for the first, August. like, three fucking years of his career, bro. Like, droughts happen. Look, I'm not saying Lukaku drought can be equated to Harry Kane uh, drought, but that's the reason, like, we don't put Lukaku and Kane in the same stratosphere. What we're saying is that Lukaku is a good player for United. I think he has class moments. I don't think he's world-class because to be world-class, your whole game has to be encompassed, including your decision decisions. But I think this is exactly where he should be. I think this is a, he's at the club where he should be. He's friends with everyone. He, he's and productive as hell. One year, guys. Look at Salah. All of a sudden, he's world-class. <clears throat> he's this. He's a, Salah has had one year of legit production. This he's putting year, up production now, now though. I mean, like still, yeah, his his, his alien numbers last year. You can't. Well, I mean, that's, that's just saying. like Huss has like Huss has been saying. Like it's a freak year for him, sure. But like he's consistently like top of the the. No, he's like, not least... consistently. No, he's not consistently because when he was at Chelsea, he was mediocre. When he was at Roma, he did well. But no one saw this coming with Salah. So even Salah was bouncing between good player and like yeah. mediocre player, and then now he's a great player. One year one makes year. him a great player. Look, and the difference with Lukaku, bro, is like just the numbers don't lie. I 100% agree with you. He's raw as hell. Tom said it. We all know that. Snack. It's not like we see this guy and we compare him to the smooth guys uh, uh, who play that position. But we just look at his production. And we say, look, man, it's ugly. It's unorthodox. But today he scores two. But he, right but he, gets, but, but he gets buckets score. is what you're saying. But he gets buckets. And last year he was United's top scorer, bro. Like So, like, of, of know course what this, this year struggled. Called, this used to be called like a poacher. Uh, uh, exactly, a Tom. Like, one of those guys, Chicharito, Solshire. Solshire was a poacher. Eddie Sheeringham, Ru Ruben Nisroy, he was smooth at his moments. And I think Lukaku's, he's not Ruben Nisroy by any stretch in terms of finishing. But, like, look, man, he just has those times where he can be raw, like Cavani. Cavani's not a dribbler, guys. He's not going to try to do anything. Yeah, unless you but want he to can him. bang in goals. But I'm not yeah. saying, yeah, but I'm. I mean, so I don't know, man. I, I think maybe I just look back like, at the price tag. I look back at some performances that, he, that he's had, and I just think that if you're worth as much as you got paid for, you're earning the wage you're getting. Yeah, but, you're but putting up performances like that against Man too, City and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's it's not, maybe I'm just setting no. the bar too high. Maybe I'm just setting the bar very, very high for Lukaku, and maybe I should lower my expectations look, but for him. No, at the same time, high. At the same time, you could make those same exact arguments for Pogba. The difference is Pogba's YouTube highlight is incredible. You know what I mean? Like, he's got moves. He can beat people. So, like, you see that flash, and that sort of, like, satisfies you. It's that Liverpool thing of, man, the football is pretty, but where's the silverware? So, with Pogba, it's not, it's not even where that. was the it's... production? Like, Lukaku is ugly to look at, and now he's not scoring. It, it's like, dude, why is this guy even in the EPL? Pogba was also in Juventus where he's surrounded by legends. Okay, yeah, but Pogba right now is he's still surrounded by legends and Pogba's baller. I, I, I don't get the comparison. I don't get the comparison. What I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, sorry. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, come on, Huss. So, what I'm saying is, Pogba, yeah, he had that flash or he had that long distance range like, goal. Or he was also with Juventus where they were going to win almost every game. They were in Champions League where Juventus just handled some players. They got to the finals, yeah, but they didn't win. Love, what I'm love. saying is with Lukaku is he wasn't with that team. He was with Everton. He was with West Brom. And he made he made made shit gold, basically. And, he made and, a bad situation good. And, and he had 25 goals with Everton in league. Yeah, he only had 16. And right now he only has 12 with United. And that could improve, but he's 25. Exactly. I, I and think look, and look, look, could, his prime, way, way. His mid prime will be in about a year, probably two years. And with I don't the want to make this anti-Pogba either, man. I don't want to make it anti-Pogba at all. I was just bringing Pogba up because I'm saying, like, you're criticizing him for his production or his droughts or his downtime. Pogba took basically two years off, and we realize it's because he was handcuffed. I don't know he, about that. I wouldn't say that. But... His highlights that you always bring up is the <laughs> brace he had at Man City, bro. Like, I mean, he's played plenty of games between now and then, but that I mean, one's always the, the one. That... You keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. And I don't want to make this anti Pogba, but I'm saying like the same things you're criticizing Lukaku for. You could call out Pogba for, you, especially this Lukaku's season. Game, like, look, and he's got for me. I like watching Lukaku play because people like they make fun of him. Oh, he's slow. Lukaku's one of the fastest plays on United, man. But yeah, he, is. Is. But, 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 but I don't think he doesn't have the quickest acceleration. 
He has yeah, fast he, speed, but not very good. No, listen, I don't think he, he does step overs and stuff. Like he, he can actually run when he gets people, going. Yes, yeah, that's true. But he like, can, like beat people, but, but that three to six. So what I'm saying that three to six yards. Uh, Quick How's movement to go around someone. He doesn't have that. I, it's not. It's not. It's not aesthetically. Like if you're putting up numbers, you're putting up numbers. And I, I agree with you guys that 25, 26, 27 goals and twenty percent is is a big <laughs> is a it's good goal production from your striker. <clears throat> but I think sixteen league goals isn't enough. And I also believe that you know. Like I watch performances, right? And like I, you know, I hate to bring up Man City and the big games and stuff like that. Actually, I don't hate it. I actually love it because he, a, he doesn't show up. You're and if you go yourself. back, no, hold on, hold on. If you go back to the Man City game we played, them when we lost like two 0 Lukaku was at full, fault for both of the goals. How are you gonna be a striker and be at fault for both of the goals, bro? Maybe defense should do better. From no, bro. Pieces. Like he, like the first goal was a corner. It yeah. came right to him on the post. He was hugging the uh, post. And he cleared it. He should have cleared it out for an out of bounds. No, he cleared it yeah, right into I mean, right right Chris Smalling's back. What do you to do with him being a forward, forward bro? So what are you saying? Your forward isn't your best defender? Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> in general, like, it's just game awareness. It's just common sense. Yeah, Come on, man. Game. Look, Snacks, no one's saying, no one's saying 16. Go ahead, Tom. I'm saying, look at the big picture of what you're saying. So his first year, right? First year of the big club comes in, scores 16 goals, like, Pretty good. Okay, I would understand that. Class. I would understand no. that. I would 100 percent understand that point if he was going to like a Real Madrid or Juventus, a different league. But he's been in the Premier League. He scored in the big games against in the Premier League. I, I don't understand why the jump is that significant. In my big, opinion, are you kidding? Because me? it's a different America stage, bro. <laughs> it's a different world, the bro. Pressure it takes to play every single game. You don't understand that? Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Everton with club. Lukaku made it to like you, made it fourth, made it to the Champions club, League. Like, if you don't understand that, you don't understand your club. I'm no, I, I, I no, I, I understand it, bro. I, I understand it. It's like if Snacks, you could go the out, jump is so, so fucking return, massive, bro. And he, I think he got seven assists, so sixteen and seven, like that's pretty damn good production. And Tom, he was top five, Mourinho, right? So like everyone sucked under Mourinho. Right? Everyone. And then now we're seeing him getting back into the goals. Yeah, he suffered the injury a little bit. He started out a little bit slow. But, bro, just look at this man's production and, and judge him by what he does. And newsflash, let's remember how, how good Real Madrid and, and Barcelona are. I mean, dude, you can't have him – they can't compare that. I mean, that's Mortal Kombat level. Dude, he's playing at Smash Combat level, level right now. Uh, all right, let's say, let's say, okay, let's say Atletico, for example. Like, I didn't see the dig. <laughs> if you go to Atletico and, <laughs> you know, like, Di like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you someone who's on his level. When Diego Costa came to Chelsea, he banged in goals left and right, you know, and he was coming from a different league. Well, we're going to say just because he was a few years older, he understood. No, the snacks, but like, what do you say about Morata then? Bro, no, look, a, just because one guy comes in from another league and bangs doesn't mean every guy who's going to come in is going to. But that's that's my I point. My him. point is, is that like, if Diego Costa can do it and then win the league, obviously you know we weren't close to winning the league. I'm not I'm not comparing that, but like if Diego, Diego Costa, Costa can be the focal point to why you win the league, I don't see why Lukaku, who has Premier League experience, maybe not at that level. You know why, bro? Because guys just peak at different times, man. Some guys like Mbappe are just going to fucking carry a team from 19 years old. But like, we can't look at all 19 year olds and say, well, you're not doing Mbappe level. So what's wrong with you? Like, dude, Lukaku's not ready to have a fucking uh, a Premier League title built on him. But in two, three years, he easily could be. And at the, the, the chemistry level he fits into the team, I don't see why you'd need to go out and get a guy like Icardi who's going to come in, upset the locker room with his crazy Real. wife and shit. Like, it's sure, man, it's right flashier. Right. It's cute because you play FIFA. You're just like, that guy has ability. I'm going to play him. But, like, there's a lot that goes into the shit. And Lukaku has great relationships with all the young up upcoming guys. He's seen as a leader. a leader. We've seen him in Belgium at the World Cup holding team talks, telling fucking Hazard what to do and shit. Nah, but like, he's got a raw touch sometimes, so he's trash. So no, right? Like, so, like, look, man, like Tom says, there's more good than bad. Snacks, I'm not sitting here saying this guy is fucking silky. <laughs> I'm not sitting here saying he's silky, he's the best in the world, but I'm saying this Lukaku project at United is fucking worth giving another year. If he has another year like he did this year, then I might my patience might start to wane where I'm like, all right, dude, like, some point, figure, like I'm fortunate out, in a position. Yeah, but like he deserves three years, and his first year was top five best starters for fucking forward. I know you guys are probably tired of me quoting that on the on the podcast. Me and but, you both, me and you both bring up just like old points like ten times. No, but like, <laughs> but like that's the fucking point. This guy's top five 
like first year in United history. Like, so don't you think he deserves another year or two to figure it out? And now I think he deserves at least this uh, next season Andre. and the season after. Good matter. Let's talk about your boy, though, Andres Pereira. Pereira. Yeah, bro. And Dude, that's my banger, boy. Bro. That's, that, that's an, bro, Luke Shaw's wide open. You see right before he takes a shot, Luke Shaw with his, his arm. He's like, yo, I'm open. Walk one, bro. Pass the ball. Nah, bro. Top nah, things, got bro. Like Pick I got this. shit out, bro. <laughs> what a fucking goal. Especially with, with Pereira. He's had like a lot of like, there have been reports that like his dad's like, oh, I'd like my son to play for Santos in Brazil. And, you know, like him. Stop it, that. Him and his like rumors with when Jose was with us that he like he went on loan a bunch of times didn't really work out for him. It's great to see. I mean, like the circumstances are kind of unfortunate because it's due to injury, but he's getting his chance and he's Take making it, he's gonna make it very hard for Herrera to come back into the side. And that's good, man. That's that's exactly what you want. Like obviously, I think Herrera, as soon as he's ready, he'll plug back in Matic as well. But like this is what you want at United. <laughs> this is why, like. The youth system has always worked so well. It's like in times like this, we don't have that like Man City setup where like you just buy twenty two guys and maybe stop bleeding your youngsters after that. Or the Chelsea setup is like, dude, McTominay. We know there's a bit of rawness to your game, but here's uh, here's a derby uh, against Liverpool. Like you're coming in, dude. Like we need you, and you're gonna step up. Pereira made a giant error. They sat him for a while. He got his head back together, and he's showing like. Dude, there's a bit of like bravery about this kid, he's especially to take that game, shot. Man. You can tell he he does. He's got some. Yeah, man. I've I've loved this kid since the reserves, bro. We've been watching him since the reserves, and then he's been out on loan a bunch of times, like Snacks was saying. That's always been my thing with um Herrera. Um, is, is that like I felt like Man United, you guys have always gotten production from your midfield players. Yeah, you know they've always chipped in like five, seven goals here. Yeah, and, like, for five, sure, man. Seven assists here, and, like. That's just helped your Unless team. Unless you're Pogba and you and, got like 14 and you got like 10 or 11. And, yeah, then you're a savage. But I, I see Herrera, Then you're Herrera, savage. This dude, this dude Herrera, like he's – I see him almost as like um, how we're using like Aaron Ramsey or Mesut Ozil, like yes, now. Like in certain games, he's good. Yeah. You know, you, you can use him as that For guy. For sure, but man. Going forward, is he – the out and out starting center midfielder no. for Manchester United? No, you know, I, don't, I don't think he is. Out. And I don't think – I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, no, like uh, what's yeah, a very good player. Yeah, man. When Carrick was brought in, was he an out and out starter? No, obviously eventually it evolved into him being an out and out starter, but like he had to work hard to get in that midfield. Darren Fletcher, like, yeah. so like we've, the, the, you need guys with a bit of identity and that bravery that'll bleed the United way. But man, if we get another sentiment like Savage, obviously it's going to affect his playing time, but like, Damn, I think yo, getting rid of like Savage would be perfect. yeah. The summer he's coming, bro. He's coming the summer. Well, he drinks the first. And he drinks the same fifth. Huh? If Arsenal stay in fifth, I mean, if United go down to, if they switch again, hey, United. Hey, no, nah, but Man United, 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 no, of course. Um, again, course, of course. Pierre, Pierre, um, he might he might be starting in two three years. Dude, that shot was outrageous. And the thing I love about that shot, like you said, was the confidence rate. Because yeah, sometimes. You want them to play all sound, but look, if you're going to score, you have to take risks. That was a risky shot, and guess what? It paid off. You what about Valerie's to... shot? What? Dude, yeah. Right. Let's let's stop it's disrespecting bandage. Valerie, man. Like, I love United, but that goal, that's my favorite so kind of fucking goal, man. That's my favorite kind of goal in the world. I know, like, people love dribbling from half, beating eight guys, and then chipping it. Like, that's cool. But, man, when you just disrespect a goalie, <laughs> and he puts two no hands on your shirt and it still goes goalie. in. For me, not this is the goalie. dunk of soccer, bro. This is the dunk of soccer. Everything else is like, you know, lay up and one bullshit. This is a dunk. He just blasted through De Gea's hands. De Gea went two hands near post. <laughs> he just still killed him, bro. Just disrespectful. And he's and the, the best one in the world, the, let's be honest. And then the free kick, dude, by James Ward-Prowse. N- near mean, post, bro. Looks like there was a – I read, a, read an article, man, and the guy's – the guy was like raiding players and stuff, and he's like, "Looks like the near post is David de Gea's kryptonite." I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna agree or disagree, but I'm just gonna say we'll we, see. we've we've conceded we've conceded you know a good amount of set piece goals this season. They've all been near post. Oh yeah, no, for sure, man. But like, it's fucking de Gea being left out yeah, to yeah, dry yeah, too, and man. That's, and that's I mean, again, I, that's not I, that's I, not to say David de Gea is a worse right. goalkeeper for that. Look how like, much those he had on that shot, dude. No one's closing down. Yeah, that no, that's no, what I'm not saying. The I'm shot. Just... He's saying set pieces, not the oh, shot. No, but in in general, though, but the defense, that's that's his kryptonite. 
not the other team. It's his <laughs> own team. His I own think so team too. Tonight. I think so too. He, I think so too. His defense is his worst at enemy. Yeah, it is, man. That's why he's been fucking player of the year for the last three yeah. seasons, bro. Like it is. It's a fact of life. There's no yeah, doubt. Yeah, it. for the last four seasons, I honestly don't know where United finishes. We'd be they, fucking out. We'd be at Europa, Arsenal, yeah, chilling, be talking about, it's hey, it's man. Europa, man. No, you, I don't know if you're in fifth. Uh, you might be seventh. Or some of these. That's years. fine. Like that's, that's fine. Like it is. Yeah. And that's done that. Hey man, snacks Lukaku with those two right-footed goals, bro. Yo, shout outs to him. That's absolute that first class. finish was sick. He got the ball from Pereira, like Pereira was stumbling over, gets it to him. He like takes a touch, not raw for like the first yeah, time ever. That was surprising, and then he bro. Just, and man. then he like, you know, when some people would do like the Ronaldo chop or something, he did that, but just like kicked it forward. He just lost the defender. Pinged it right, bottom this, right. Keeper, his game. For keeper, me, I was more keeper. With the second goal, snacks because oh, that was like that was class. An that was class. First time shot, bro. Like kind of like poach it right place at the right time, but he's kind of like make your own luck goal. Yeah, bro. it was it was first it was class, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, Max is a closet Lukaku fan. He's nah, he's that, foolish nah, right now. Around, he has bro. a Rashford <laughs> poster on his wall, but I need that Rashford poster. He's a Lukaku poster. No, listen, listen, listen. I just want to get. I just want to. I want this on the record. Like you're punking us. If no, I'm not. I swear. I don't even have a. I have a United flag in my room. Yeah, but I, I can see that flag in the background. Yeah, there's no, a Lukaku that's poster. That's different. No, nah, that's 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 Is different. That I have like an. What? You said punk. Oh, all right. Damn. No, 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 no. <laughs> you just. All right. Anyways, I want this on the record. Right. Like, if Lukaku, like, and I am totally a hundred percent okay with accepting the fair weather and the bandwagon fan. If Lukaku becomes the next Harry Kane, by all means, I'm hopping down on two knees. And I'm so Rashford is supposed to be the Jeez. next Harry Kane. Like, Lukaku, dude, for me, I don't see his ceiling. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm just saying, like, goal goal production. Like, if he starts, like, if we're in the midst of a title run and if Lukaku scores 20, 25 goals a season, like, I'm getting on my knees and I'm sucking, bro. I'm moving my head up and down, bro. (laughs) Dead ass. Like, I'll be honest with you. But but I think, I think my criticism of him, while very harsh at times, is is a bit warranted at times. There are definitely some times, like if he cuts out, like, if time? he learns to cut out the inconsistencies of going, like because it's not five or six games or seven games. It's like, like you read the what is it uh, against Crystal Palace when we played the midweek? The notification I sent it in the group chat while you guys are blowing this guy. He <laughs> fourth his first goal in ten games, bro. I'm sorry, that is unacceptable. If you're a Manchester United striker, I, Rashford Dude, is like oh, eleven years it? old. Look, it's acceptable. It's acceptable in this version of Man United as long as he's progressing upward. That's what I was saying. Like he's trend. He came in as a top five. He took a step back this season, but even that, even still, I got his numbers fucking here, man. He's got eighteen goals this year in all, uh, twenty goals in all comps. So like. And why do you not step that back? There's no way. Deal. And because he took things context. Dude, I'm looking oh, at. I'm looking yeah. at. Uh, I'm looking at who scored right now, bro. Twenty fucking goals. Hold on, I got. I gotta look at this. All I gotta look right. at this. I gotta look at this. You, do you have to look at this? I gotta look at this. Yeah, bro, you're you're crazy, bro. He has 13 goals this season. I don't okay, know. Okay, my bad. Mean. My bad. Who's playing you, bro? Yeah, I must be <laughs> looking at goals. the wrong fucking and thing. He's played 26 hey, Premier League games, uh, three FA Cup games, one there. EFL Cup game, and six Champions League. It's games. an off year. So, like, why doesn't why don't why doesn't he get the Jose Mourinho like benefit of the doubt as well? Like, why? Why do you give it to Pogba? Pogba? Why do you give it to Rashford? Why do you give it to all these guys? But Lukaku doesn't get it. No, nah, listen, 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 listen. He's prejudiced against Lukaku. Nah, man, it's not just that. Man. It's, 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 it's okay. You guys like to talk about age. I think okay. Hold oh, on, before before you go, before. No, no. Would you take Lukaku over the Lacazette? Over Lacazette? Yeah, no, I would. I take Lacazette. Tom, me too. I'll take Lacazette. Okay, okay. I but, think Lacazette's a better striker, but here's the thing. With Rashford, under his Jose Mourinho time, he played left wing, right wing. Sure, he might have had some good games, primarily the Liverpool game last season. Sure, he had some good games, but that's not his position. You, he played on the right wing this game. He played awful against Southampton. Against Southampton, he played awful. Pogba, he, he Pogba had no excuse because Pogba, while he shouldn't – like, while he doesn't prefer to play defense, he should just suck it up and play defense. I just backed Pogba because I'm just like, okay, like – if I'm looking at the situation, I want Pogba to succeed. I want the whole team to succeed, but like in this situation, <laughs> I want to see. I want to see. Pogba like, was the PK, by the way. This yeah, game, yeah, this yeah he did. Run up. And he was fucking trash this game. And it was trash. And he was trash. 
Just worry like about Lukaku, it, Graham. Like Lukaku, Why would like we gotta say that though. Why do we have to pull that out of you? If Lukaku just did it, if Lukaku did the same thing, that's what you'd be all leave. over him, bro. No, Lukaku. Lukaku and Lukaku, by the way, Pogba should have given Lukaku the hat trick PK, bro. Why? Why 100%, not? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But like you going they back must. to your question, I like agree. why don't I get? Why don't? Because like. While Pogba was signed under Mourinho, was like Pogba a Mourinho signing? Like, is that who he would have preferred to sign? No, he probably would have signed Matic, probably someone else he had managed before. Lukaku. Yeah, he wanted he wanted Morata instead of Lukaku. Mm-mm. He wanted Morata. No, 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 no. He wanted yeah. Lukaku, bro. He wanted Lukaku, bro. He wanted Morata. I'm a hundred percent sure he wanted Lukaku. Hundred. I'm a hundred percent sure. Mourinho, Mourinho has a track record of signing former players. While Lukaku didn't play much for Mourinho at Chelsea. He definitely wanted Lukaku more. He fits the system. Yeah, He's yeah. a big know, bully. Max heard it on his was. forums. His forums. He heard it online. He saw it. Mourinho only wanted. I read, only it. I read, I read it. I read it. We got to We got to keep this moving, man. Running out of time here. Running out of juice and battery. Design. For sure, man. But no, like Man United get a victory. It's incredible. Top four again. Uh, Fergie time. Absolutely loving it, man. It's gonna be a battle for that fourth position, no doubt. Fulham one, Chelsea two. Scott Parker's first game. It's kind of like seeing Farid out there, bro. I always yeah. thought Scott Parker kind of looks like Farid. <laughs> um, but, man, he loses his first game at home, really. expected <laughs> um, against Chelsea. But what do you guys think here, man? Iguain scores. Look, full of Georgina some scores. Part. Tim Reed, man, you did your best, bro. You try to hold it down. <laughs> you try to hold it down, man. I see. I see, man. Look, Fulham, they had their chances as well. But Chelsea looked good, man. They looked good with they look sure of, of themselves a little bit now with Hazard out wide, Iguain starting at the nine position. Um, I think he's trying to find a better balance in midfield with Jorginho, Barkley, and Conte. And, I mean, I mean, they, look, man, Fulham, they, they're the leakiest team in the league, bro. Like In the world, bro. They're, they're, they're a prostitute to the EPL. You hey, know Jimmy, I mean? did you see where Callum Chambers, uh, Chambers played? Was it right back, was he, or was he wrong? Was he right back? I thought he played more middle. Yeah, D mid, D mid. Yeah, he's playing more midfield, dude. Bro, he played. He had a good game too, man. Yeah, he's got your shocker replacement. You got your shocker replacement right there. Look, Fulham is a weird. Fulham's a weird team. Like they, they just seem. They seem good. They, they seem like they made great signings. They seem like they made the right moves in every essence, but they just don't seem good enough to beat well anybody. I here's the thing. Here's the thing with. Here's the thing with Fulham, man. I think. Especially with the Ranieri signing. Because, like, the guy that they had before Ranieri, I don't even remember his name, to be honest with you. But he was the guy that, like, promoted them. And I think the kid, they, oh, started, yeah. they, started off, um, they started off poorly. And when he got sacked, I think all the players in the locker room looked at, looked at each other and they said, yo, we just got to hold this L. We'll come back next year. Because, bro, it's, it's, the, it's the same old song and dance with Fulham. Ryan Babel. You know, he ca- he comes in January trying to keep him up, trying to motivate the boys. His red hair can't do it. Um, it's it's just that, like, Tiki said, they're just the leakiest team, like, in the world. Like, they just – they let in goals. And I fucking love it because Sergio Rico is a fucking cocksucker. Wow. I love the fam, bro. I love, I wait, love wait, it, bro. How? how is he? What was that? How is he? Because he decides to freaking show up against Manchester United last season. The oh, Champions my League. God. Oh, you still butthurt about that? So <laughs> petty, bro. I'm the pettiest oh, okay. person in the world, bro. <clears throat> Dude, but look at this team. Like, look, if Fulham go down, you're looking at Sesson Young being gone, Michevich, Chambers. I mean, obviously, uh, probably half their team's gone. And so I don't know. If, if they go down, well, Bobo only has a back contract. back contract. Babo came in on a six month contract. I mean, like, it'll all depend. I mean, I think they got, you know, they're trying to get that feel good factor, like how we did with Ollie. They brought in, they bring in Scott Parker, who's like a Fulham legend. So, you know, they, they're. You might as well strap him up and play. Yeah, they're just, they're trying to, they're trying to get that good feeling back, you know, especially like players like Ryan Sessignon, who are like, like 15, 16 years old. It's an exaggeration, of course. I think like Scott Parker. While they definitely aren't going to stay up in the league, we'll get enough. We'll hopefully do enough so that he can at least keep some of those players. Because, like, bro, Fulham, like, coming in in August, like, when we saw that the players they were buying and the way they were setting up, they were set to be one of the more exciting lower teams of the league. It just, yeah, like, it just oh, didn't happen. I was, I was actually thinking about Tessa Young for a moment. Where is Do you think it's a good change for him to start going as a winger? Kind of, kind of doing, like, the whole Gareth Bale where he went from, like, Outside back to midfield to winger, where Sesson Young, this day and age when there's so many wingbacks, is it better that he just he could have just stayed as a wingback, 
go to a top tier team. Because think about like a Man City in three years, he's probably not going to beat out the wingers, but he could maybe be a left back, a left wing back. I think I think they know that, um, and he's versatile, and it depends on where really the player wants to play. Remember, Theo Walcott had a thing where he wanted to play, play up top. He was yeah. forced to play right wing. Um, so, it's, I think it's one of those types of situations. If the player wants to play in their starting position, and I, but I think I think Ryan Stesignan is he's comfortable pretty much everywhere. So I think it's gonna, just going to come to where he gets the most production. I mean, like he obviously got the most production last season in the championship at left back, scoring like eighteen goals, which is like unheard of for a left back. So it's just if like he's ba- like I'm sure he likes to play further forward more than he likes to defend, but like. Yeah, talk I don't about know. He's an up. English. He's an English kid. Like English kids are the grit and grind kind of players. You know what I mean. So th- they'll pretty much play anywhere you put them. Um, so I think Sessegnon. I don't know, man. Like if he's gonna make the jump from Fulham, he, like he can do no better than like an Everton or maybe a Leicester. He has to go to another lower league side, get his confidence, and then he'll make that jump to the big six because he has the talent. It's just the consistency isn't there yet. Yeah, I mean he's a kid, man. So like kids usually get moved around positions a lot, like until they figure out exactly how you fit into the squad. He can play anyway down the left, man. I wouldn't mind seeing him at United, even like just to be an understudy of of Shaw or even I the would. third place he, left back. Obviously, yeah, you I, would. I would have a problem with that because I yeah, think of course, one of those kids who he needs to play. He's already in an EPL team. Okay, they're most likely relegated, but he's already getting regular time in the EPL team, man. This kid, even he then, is he, bro? Because like play. he he seems like the guy that should be in and out, and like he's always the guy that's more often out than in. Like, he comes off the bench a lot for them. Yeah, it does. He's a young guy, though. You exactly. Know, so, like, for United, it would be the same thing. He'd be a young guy, except he'd be playing around bigger stage, more pressure. Look, I'm not saying he should go to United. But what I'm saying is, if he went to United, I don't think it would be that bad a move because he's not locked down a Fulham starting position. Like, obviously, you could say it's easier, but... Yeah, and there's some cool. guys... There's some guys who you know, like develop better around better players. You know what I mean? And nah, like bro, we got Anhel not- Gomes, bro. I'm I'm good with Anhel Gomes over Sesame. Yeah, different bro. position, bro. Different there's position. That, that, but man, there's there's nothing like game time and you know that. There's that's facts. Like yeah, no, that's 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 definitely that's facts on no, baby. that's definitely that's definitely facts, man. That's definitely facts. That's no facts doubt, on baby. Bro. On baby. On no doubt. baby, what is what does that mean? Baby. You ever see that guy on YouTube that says facts on baby? And I've never heard of that. I don't watch YouTube on top of Yo, um, you Emerson, iPhone? all right, man. Let's refocus here. Baby. <laughs> Emerson yeah. finally gets a start over Alonzo. Uh, very happy to see this. Uh, I think Alonzo. Yeah, we haven't even talked about Chelsea. Yet. <laughs> yeah, man. I think Alonzo, some way, somehow, dude, pulled the wool over the manager's eyes because he's not. If Moses is not a fullback, there's no chance Alonzo's um, a fullback, and he showed it, dude. He absolutely. Well, well, Alonzo's more of a fullback than Moses. I will. I will say no that. Way, he's bro. not much better. He's not much better. He's a wingback. No. Both of them are wing backs. Agreed. And I think Alonzo, you saw it this year, bro. A lot of goals came from his side. He's just, he can't defend. And that's why I've always fucking hated him because he was a system player and everyone jocked him. And I was like, look, as soon yeah, as yeah. he loses that system, you guys will see how fucking garbage this guy is. Oh, yeah. Conte oh, mediocre. The, not garbage. I don't want to say garbage. Yeah, mediocre. Conte was in the Leicester game. He was, it was, sorry, not in, but at the Leicester game. That made me think of him because where if he was managing, again, Moses, Alonzo, go where he is. Just go to where Conti is coaching, and he'll put you back in your preferred <laughs> or most productive I'll position. Never be an agent, bro. I should be. <laughs> I'm on the phone. Yo, I played well, played well, man. It was good to see us playing well. Go ahead. Keppa, Keppa gets back in the lineup after a, a drop, a midweek drop against whoever they played midweek, and I'm pretty sure they had won. But he had a good game, man. Keppa yeah. had a good game as well. Yeah, yeah, man. That whole debacle from last weekend seems to be. Coming, coming to an end. Look, that's, what, that's what Sari said. They're like, "Oh, you got him back in the starting lineup." What's I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. Abramovich was just like, "Yo, like, why did you drop Keppa for the nah, game?" Look, nah, maybe, maybe not, man. Um, he knows why. I think he him. just said. He just said he basically bring him back in so people can stop talking about it. Because if he didn't play this game, one of our debates points would be, "Okay, when do you bring Keppa back in?" And like now, it's dead. By next week, we will we'll have forgotten this whole. Kepa's story. So that's why he said he said I did it so the story would die. It was a misunderstanding. And well, it's like a child, man. You punish them when they do something bad. You don't continuously punish them and Agreed. hold on to the past. Like you gotta Agreed. move on. You don't pull a Jose, bro, and get all butt hurt. Yeah, man. You gotta move on at some point. So he handled it perfectly, honestly. Yeah, he, he did. Down to build them back up. You don't bury them. 
Yo, Jorginho had a ping, though. Nice, great assist by Eden Hazard. Of course, guy scampering all over the left side of the pitch. I mean, he just... He just rolled it on him like 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 the pitch. What is, was what is his grade so far this year? You think? Who? A B C D E F. Hazard. Yeah. B plus. No 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 Hazard. Uh, Jordino. B minus. Yeah B minus. Yeah. Nothing too special. Like he shows glimpses of like the future. It's his first goal for the club. The guy they need. First but then there's all the times like. Mm. Look, I'd be curious to see how he would have played at City because I think there's a lot more to this guy's game, but like. Because of the simple demands of that position, like basically, sorry, just wants you to get it, release it, get it, release it. Like it doesn't have to be forward. It doesn't have to be a penetrating pass. So that's a criticism he gets from the Chelsea fans who actually booed him when he came on uh, midweek. It's fucking crazy how they've turned on this poor guy. Like it's not his fault. Chelsea fans Conte. are the worst, bro. Uh, no, it's Conte for sure. But like it's not Georgie, it's not Jorginho's fault. You know what I mean? Like. Jorginho, they tell you you're playing the six. What's he going to say? No, coach, the fans want Conte there, so let me step out of the – like, well, there's no point booing Jorginho. He hasn't, been, he hasn't been producing. They just Agreed, bro. Understand. But, like, like man, that's so fucked up. No, oh, I know, bro. Oh, no. The Chelsea fans suck, bro. They're the worst. <laughs> it's so rude, bro. The guy's here, what, seven months? He hasn't made mistakes. He hasn't been producing. But sorry he doesn't want that production from that position – like, how are you going to boo Chelsea this dude? Chelsea fans are ultimate popcorn <laughs> fans. Microwave, throw that shit in there. Give it to me now. We just got a new manager. Let's win the league now. There's no loyalty. Yeah, that's bro. true, bro. Not, not like people that prefer to have the same manager for 20 years, even though they're doing bad. Even, <laughs> though, even, ah, though, even ah, though the guy ah, looks like he's about to God die. He. Even though, see, with the even sick though the, segue, bro. Hates him. God he. They don't have the prospects coming up. No, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you Tom, Tom, me? Tom, hold this. Oh, hold this L, bro. Hold this L. Hold the L, bro. On your chest. I hold this L. All right, man. Let's get into this quick touch. Hussey out here throwing haymakers. Watford 2, Leicester 1. Let's keep this one a quick touch for real, for real. Battery's about to die over here. Um, Rogers, first game in charge here, loses to a late game winner by Andre Gray. That's the second. Home winner in a row, dude, off the bench. Andre Gray finding his role, man. Here's the thing, man. How are Watford going to win 5-1, lose 5-0, and then win 2-1, man? That is the beauty of the Premier League. Yeah, welcome back and to the EPL, bitch. Brandon Rogers. <laughs> yeah, dude, favorite, so awesome favorite, now, bro. He's your favorite awesome. manager, bro. Oh, manager in like three years. It's your favorite. It's, he's your favorite man. manager, Stop bro. Me. He's your Killing favorite manager. Celtic. Oh, double treble. Oh, we just ripped it. <laughs> can't even, can't even, beat, can't even beat these dudes. Uh, uh, and so because he left mid-season, <laughs> because he left mid-season, he can't even go back to Scotland. They don't even want him back there. Um, nah, bro, honestly, he, he, was, he, was, he shot on Musa Dembele, who uh, he used to be at Celtic. He number left nine, yeah. Beyond now. And he was like, yeah. oh, he just went there for money and da-da-da. And then he moves. So it's like, yeah, bro, you're Her a career, man. Yeah. I like honestly. Do they say they say the same thing about Sterling, bro? Yeah, bro. It's always sour grapes when a player leaves, but when it, yo, I gotta do my thing. Yeah, the one, right, the one thing I realized again, <laughs> him on the yeah. sideline, is that I don't think he should have lost all that weight. He looks like greasy, like now. He, he like since he lost that weight, I don't know. He needs some lip balm too. All yeah, right, you should, you should pack on more weight, like you. Oh, fat hustles. Winter hospice. Hey, don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry. Greasy, but it just, was hey, it was just last week when Fat Tom was feeding me pasta. Oh! Yo, yo, shout out to Tilly Mans, dude. This guy, I love that he's at this club. Um, I hope he, I hope he stays. He's getting game time. He's surrounded by a lot of young talent. I think it's a perfect place for him to develop. And Rogers, very skilled at developing young talent as well. So guys like Madison, Barnes, oh, geez, Gray. Mad heart, bro. Dude, Madison's Why about this life, huh? So badly, dude. Like, I know it's quick touch, but like, yo, man, this guy, he wanted this yeah, man. game. No, nah, dude, it's it's nice to see this. This is going to be the young squad of the future here, man. Once they phase out uh, Morgan and uh, Evans, everyone else is going to be young. Dude, guys like Ndidi are just out here fucking balling. And uh, true or false? Indeed. Fifteen Indeed. years from now, does Vardy have a statue outside Leicester? Dude, he has to, bro. Yeah, he has yeah, to. The only yeah, one they, they the He's the league, only bro. one who didn't fucking leave, bro. Everyone else left for the monies and the glory. He's he fucking the stayed. 
And the owner, the owner who passed away in the plane crash probably needs one too. No, he'll have it for sure. The owner will have it. Uh, Wolves uh, two, Cardiff zero. The Wolves bounce back. First win in three EPL games. Tom. Uh, woo! Speed it to do to do sad in the house in the house and it was it was he man he man the striker partnership uh it's just it's flowing it is absolutely flowing they're running like a pack guys these guys are a true pack pack. yeah yeah hus you guessed it (laughs) (laughs) yeah man it's good it's good to see wolves back at it man these guys play such attractive football it was weird. He rested. He rested a lot of people here, um, with Moutinho and Neves on the bench. Costa as well. Um, guys like Sais came in and uh, absolutely did the job. Then Donker, he's another young guy. I like um, that he's in the EPL, developing yeah, with a club world. like he was, Wolves. He was to United. The he Donker was man. Was, he was uh, when we had Louis Van Hall, who was just buying randoms from. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's a promising kid, man. I've seen links to like Barcelona and stuff as well. Not like legit, but like he's in that. Like people are watching him to see how he develops, and I think Wolves is perfect for him. Um, next game, Burnley one, Palace three. Bashwai oh. scores two goals in two games for him. Well, in the last two games for him. I'm trying to tell you about Batman. Yo, man, this you mean is, Robin? Got goals in his game. You mean Robin? Got, right, look, he, he just bounces around. Look, he scores goals typically for the most bro, part. Bro, Batchwa is like the Riddler, bro. Batchwa is literally the Riddler. He's like the wackest of the DC, like, Batman universe characters, bro. <laughs> bro, first of all, the Riddler is fire. And no, he's not, he's bro. Batman. He's the guy that everyone and, shits and, and, on, bro. And Riddler is in Batchwa's story, though. Like, I'm telling you, man, this, this kid is nice, bro. He just made the classic mistake of going to Chelsea under 22 years old. It's the worst move you can make. Pulisic? Bro. I'm nervous for him and American soccer. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really nervous for that move. But this game was about Willie Zaha with the super douse. I mean, this guy took on like four or five players. Dude, that was so rude. Knees, had him down there like snacks, ready to suck it after Lukaku yeah. was him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he That's so aggressive, bro. Too. That was so he rapey. Bro, I'm telling you, man, this dude Zaha's ready for a next level jump. We say it every week, guys. I want him at Arsenal so bad. I think he, he, he'd be. Bro, you want everyone at Arsenal, bro. You're turning into no, the new Haas. Like this guy would be guy. great at Arsenal. Oh, uh, he's just the new Arsenal. Oh, I could have had that guy. I tried to sign that guy. I did that guy. Yeah. Haas, you can't, Haas, you can't deny. There was like a, a, a good 15 week period where you're like, you know what? That guy, I think he'd be a great fit at Liverpool. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of surprised that you said 15 weeks. It's been longer than 15 weeks. It's been good. Yeah, right. It's been legit years. years. Dude. <laughs> Fuck Bashwai, fuck Zaha. This man, Ashley Barnes, five goals, one assist in six games. This dude is quietly popping, and because he plays for Burnley, he's not going to get heat, doesn't score the prettiest goals. But, man, this guy by himself is rescuing Burnley's season. Shout out to him, bro. He's a a problem, man. You know, he's he's just a pest, man. He is, man. He's a pest on the field, dude, and he gets it done for them, though. He, gets he does, man. Uh, West Ham 2, Newcastle 0, Declan Come Rice. On you, coming out year. Uh, and Mark Noble gets the other goal. It was a homegrown scoreboard for West Ham. Newcastle finally stopped in their tracks, man. But it was a good game. I enjoyed this one. My yeah, man, man, Declan Jambalaya Rice. Doing Jambalaya, thing, bro. <laughs> bro. Yo, that's my new nickname for him, bro. <coughs> Dude, Jambalaya Rice, he's looking like the real deal, man. He is, man. Very promising year for him. Long staff out there making mistakes, bro. Finally, this ah. dude's run comes to an end. Still looking good, though. And uh, don't forget, Declan Rice is still listed as a defender and still listed at 4.5 in fantasy. So if you got that, he's a great pickup. Love it. And they're playing Cardiff, Huddersfield, Everton. After that, yeah, they have a rough lineup. But for those of <laughs> you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and Chelsea United, Leicester Spurs. They finish up with uh, the same thing but at four point five, you could have them anyways. Even all right, and wrapping it up in the bum battle, Brighton one, Huddersfield zero. Here, um, Hudders is gone. Hudders is point. done. Right, next point, bro. Hudders is absolutely fucking done. It's they sad, man, done. because they they came in with with Klopp's best friend, and they were playing that expansive football. Beating That's always United, the case, bro. man. 
that first fucking year, everyone's playing on fumes because your whole fucking career, you've been trying to get into the Premier League. And now that second year slump, dude, it's very dangerous, man. And Hudders, they're going down. They're done. Slump, yes. But, I mean, they didn't play with the same heart this year. And when I say heart, I mean. That's what I mean, dude. Same thing that um, we start with a couple different teams where they just weren't the same exact team that we're. We weren't all that. Yeah, Bournemouth almost suffered this. Luckily, Eddie Howe, they, they was trusted to keep the job, and, oh, he, and he dug him out. Burnley's, Burnley's the same, same too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. that was, it was almost like this, like kind of the same cloth. Absolutely, man. It's tough, bro. It's tough that second year, but it looks like Hudders is not going to make it. Sad for them, but all right, that wraps it up for match day twenty a uh, twenty nine review, right? Um, I let's get twenty. I think it's twenty nine, bro. Hold yeah, on, it's match day twenty nine. Match day twenty nine. Out here looking like fucking amateurs. All right, bro. Classico, though. Classico, Real Madrid 0, Barcelona 1. Uh, Black, dude, crazy stat here. They said it during the game, so I'm going to give, what's his name, Phil, credit. Madrid haven't beaten Barca since 2016, bro. That is a crazy in the league, ass in the stat. League. In the in league. league. That's yeah. a simple ass. No, I don't, I, I, no, no, no. It's since up. 2016, period, bro. Like <laughs> Last season, last season, I remember in like the Copa del Rey or whatever it was before the season started, they beat him. And I remember Ronaldo took his jersey off. He got a red card. Copa him. del Rey? Oh, like the FA, the community shield? <laughs> I mean, they've beaten them. Ah, come on, bro. That's come not on, a competitive that game. That's not a competitive game, bro. They got, <laughs> they got. If Ronaldo's getting red cards, throwing his jersey yeah, up man. in the air for the fans. Stop it, bro. <laughs> so the big thing with La Liga is that Barcelona are now up seven points. Can we just call it a wrap? It's pretty much over, bro. Uh, I, no, you can't. Nah, man. Nah, nah, you nah, you it's can't. Nah, it's over. No, it's over. It's not nah. over. You can it's say over. you can say Madrid's not going to win it, but you can't say Barca's going to win it. They've Messi already won little, it, bro. Messi had a little groin pull in this game. Bro, they got Usamane Dembele on the bench, bro. I ain't worried. If no, I you started, the but you mean, they, got, they got Coutinho on the bench. But they got Boateng, bro. And Malcolm. They got Boateng. Dude, if Messi gets injured again for a month and a half, two months with these muscle injuries he's been having, Barca could be in trouble. Like, it's they got not, Boateng, it's not rap, bro. Man. They got Liga, Boateng. It's not, it's not like EPL last year, man. I'm telling you. He, he had a little groin pull. We know that's an injury that usually stays with you for the remainder of the season. So, it's going to be touch and go. But they're obviously the favorites, man. Oh, and fun fact, Snacks, Boateng's not even on the bench, dude. Yeah, I know, bro. He, he, was, on the he, was, he was a I banter already, signing. They already sold him back. He's, he's a banter. They didn't even buy him. Yeah, they loaned him. That's disrespect. Before hey, we go, got, before we move on. Before we, too. They took part we, of his name away. Before we move on, what happened to Gareth Bell, man? Is is it, is it the injuries catching up with him? Is it, is he just whack now? Like, like walk on with Gareth Bale, bro. He was – he was booed off when he got subbed on for us when the Suns here subbed on. Dude, it's the it's the hostile environment, bro. It's that, you know what it is. It's a bunch of fucking cockroaches in a dark room, and Ronaldo's there making sure the lights stay off. So these guys are, are like floating under his wing, and then he left, and the lights came on, bro. And these guys are scampering. Everyone fucking sucks at Real Madrid right now. Unfortunately, Bale was never, except for Vinicius, no doubt. Unfortunately, oh, Bale was never adopted by these fans. They never liked him, bro. Like, it's hard for English or United Kingdom players to go to Spain and be successful, bro. It's just a hostile environment. They usually also, to be fair, the English players come in not knowing a fucking lick of Spanish. At least some, most of the Spanish guys who come over speak broken English, but, like, you know, they adapt the language. I don't know. If so, like, true culturally, Bale just Bale never. Still, yeah, apparently. Bill still doesn't like speak Spanish. Exactly, bro. Teammates. Yeah. He doesn't talk to them. <laughs> exactly, bro. So, like, your teammates, like, you haven't, like, ingrained yourself in the culture. This fucking Spanish are not going to back you when you have three Is or four bad games. the summer that we see Gareth Bale being sold to a different club? Absolutely. Yeah, last summer he was going to – last summer he wanted to go, ex and uh, they convinced him to stay. They're like, Ronaldo's gone. We're going to build everything around you. So he was ready to go last summer, like Dude, based on rumors. Like Marcelo, I think Marcelo might be done. They're playing out uh, this kid Regulon at yeah. left back now. I think Tony Cruz might be up for sale. They've been, you know, it's time, it's time to flip rumors. the squad, man. Yeah, East it's time to flip well, the squad. Benzema. So there's guys, man, who. Yeah, but it happens. Coming off winning three Champions Leagues in a row. So like, yeah, on, but I mean, if we're just going to talk about Bale right now, he should leave. He should go back to England or at least uh, EPL, shall we say? No, nah, that nah, begs the question. Where that. did he go? Fuck Begs that, Bale. I, I, go to fucking France at PSG or go to Juventus in Italy, bro. Like he could get away on those two teams. He doesn't have to play thirty-eight games 
um, regular. Like, it doesn't have to be put on his back. If he comes to the EPL, bro, his fucking body's just not going to be able to handle the demand. Oh, imagine oh. imagine Bale in December, bro. Yeah, Luke, <laughs> just Luke. that month of December. He'd be oh, fucking again. broken. It's Shakiri and Bale coming off the bench. Yeah, but look, and uh, look, look, it's good for Liverpool if they could get him. But Bale, I don't know if he wants to go right to Liverpool bench. He could go right a PSG bench, get paid, live in Paris, and just show up for Champions yeah, no, League games. Who, who like, just go to Spurs? Klopp, Klopp gives easy. Or we could go to Klopp. Spurs and play for nothing, bro. Yeah, play for no trophies. Uh, ambition, it's, bro. If, if uh, it's not ambition. Spurs, oh, bro, if Gareth Bale joins Spurs, come on. No, if Gareth Bale, have... if Gareth Bale joins Spurs, what? It's emotional, bro. Because he's not going to play most of the games. He'll play he should, games he here and there. Uh, maybe. No way, bro. Bale, it, he must face the fucking music. He's injury prone. The team he goes to has to be a team that's understanding that out of 40 games, they're probably going to get 20, 25 at best. Dude, and if, if Spurs got that much out of him on top of Harry Kane and all that, bro, they could win a cup. It depends when they get it. If they get, league, if they get that, they if they get that from September to December, great. But if they don't get that now when they need it, usually after December is when everyone starts to get hurt. And that's when Bale would get hurt because of the fucking mileage put on his legs. Like, you need guys who are going to be healthy in April, bro. Like, you don't need someone who's going to be running away with it in fucking October. Who cares? Well, like you said, we don't know, man. We don't know. No, we don't know. Especially no, we like don't know. this health thing. We see, we, we've seen it with Aaron Robin, a guy who's been constantly injured. He gets the Bayern. He has a three, four-year run of not being injured. They win a Champions League. Exactly. He gets so the Bayern, but he didn't go to, like, guys, Arsenal. Man. He didn't go to Tottenham. He, that's why I'm saying Bale should go to, like, PSG oh, Juve. Yeah. Like, Bayern, that level. Shouldn't come like, down to Liverpool. Who's a I fucking speculative team? As long as you have that number one guy, like a Kane and the, and the other guys around him, like Ericsson, Son, who chip in the goals, I think that could, that could be a good fit right there, man. I don't see that. Like For sure. Shot. They're just cheap as shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Messi and Ramos here going to battle. Ramos giving Messi a bit of a left hook. There's also some headbutting involved. Um, I love Ramos, dude. I love that he's embraced the bad guy role. He's just like, dude, this is me, man. I break people's shoulders. I headbutt ball and deal winners. It's just what I do. He's a beast. <laughs> yeah, he really hasn't embraced it. I think he's just still trying to be sly. He's trying to be like, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do that. No, no. He, he's no... Bro, when he's you no left hook fucking dude. Messi no, in El Clasico and then you headbutt him, bro, this you're fucking baby. letting the world know. Admit it. No, he hasn't admitted to shit. Honestly. He did, bro. He even he slightly smiled behind Salah him, like, gotcha, bitch. Diego Costa used to throw snots at each other. Like, come on. Yeah, bro. Before we go, we got to talk about Balotelli's goal celebration today. Absolute, absolutely legendary. He gets the what do you do? Get He's the man. Man. Bro, bro, this is why you can never hate Balotelli. If you hate him, you're whack. Sorry, Huss. I know he sh- fucking sucked at Liverpool, but whatever. He's a legend, dude. He's bro, a legend. this guy scores a s- sick goal, first off. And then he goes over to the cameraman. He had it all planned out, gets his phone, <laughs> and hops on Instagram Live. He's like, hey, squad, hey. Bro, that was sick. I that like, was and sick. he posted it. He posted it during the game. So. I, no, got the, sick, I got the bro. team. I got the that team. That shows team. that he cares more about his celebration than he does his team. I got the team. The actual game. It shows that his priorities are messed up, and that's why he's not lived up to what he could have been. I got the team stream notification, and I spent like the next ten minutes going through my Instagram, and I found him, and I looked, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's a fucking baller." <laughs> yeah, he's a beast, man. It's unfortunate he never yeah. panned out, but like. I love Balotelli, bro. Yeah, awesome, bro. Euro 2012. Euro 2012. Etched in history, bro. That game against Germany, I'll never forget it. Two goals. Oh, He's a awesome. beast, man. Why always me? His talent's yeah. undebatable. Undebatable. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, that wraps it up. I think we lost Tom. Eventually, he fell off. Um, battery yeah, yeah. died. But thanks for hanging out, guys. We appreciate the support. Um, on social media, we appreciate the downloads. Yeah. Like, give comment, us a, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yeah, man, give us a review too on iTunes. That helps the show grow, um, helps us reach more people. So if you can, man, it's super easy now. If you just download the podcast app on your iPhone um, and you just go to our, you search our podcast, it's right there. You can no love for give the a Android rating fans, or review. Huh? No, no love for the Android fans. Uh, look, I don't have an Android, so I didn't want to sit here and like act like I knew what I was talking about. But of course, guys, like, all reviews help, man. If you got an Android, if you have a Windows phone, you're a little weird, but got a cool, Blackberry. Man. No judgment. Blackberry's making a comeback. So just wherever you get your podcast, like man. Service. Just, just send something through the mail. 
We'll do I'll it. Re- <laughs> I don't. I don't know if we want uh, uh, reviews in the mail, but no. you know what? It won't. It won't hurt. It won't hurt. I guess. But all right. Thank you for joining us, guys. We appreciate it. We'll catch you next weekend. Peace.